Story time. So I'm in Paris and I'm on my way to Florence to referee the Quidditch World Cup. In order to save money, I flew Boise, Seattle, Paris, and then from a different airport in Paris in order to go to Florence. It was a very long day, or days. Time changes in airports. So it's 8.45 and I get into line to check in for my 9.50 flight. I try to check in on my phone, but it won't let me unless I pay extra for premium seats. 10 minutes go by and I'm worried I won't get to the front of the line in time to check my bag. So I ask the family in front of me if they think that I'll still be able to check my bag and they say that it's gonna be fine because my flight is two hours delayed. 8.55, I check my bag and I'm informed that I have been bumped to standby. Nine o'clock and security is giving me crap because my bottles, which are clearly below the limit, don't say exactly how big they are. If you can't tell the size by looking at a bottle, you probably shouldn't be working security. Two different men examined my deodorant very closely because it was not in the liquids bag because deodorant is not a liquid. Unbeknownst to me at the time, they steal my shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. It's 9.10 and I'm at my gate and no one is there. 9.21, still no attendant, and I get a text stating, Due to operational reasons, your flight will operate from another airport. The check-in procedure will be done at the original airport. 9.35, they direct us to go down and get our checked bags. There I see the family that I had talked to and we discuss how crazy this is. We wait together for our bags, which of course take forever. My bag is the last to come off, and before the family leaves, the mother asks if I'd like them to wait for me, and I say yes. It's 9.50, the time our flight was originally intended to take off, and no one is really telling us what we're supposed to be doing. The father of the family finds out that we're supposed to wait at D, but we don't see anything that's labeled D. The family says that they might take a train instead of flying because this is ridiculous, so they leave, bid me good luck, and I look for the mysterious D. I don't find D, but I do find 150 confused people trying to get to Florence. The family comes back and says that the next train is at 7 p.m. tomorrow, so they're gonna take the plane. We're finally directed into an extremely congested area and we follow along. 10.15 and we've gotta be walking at least three quarters of a mile with all our bags. Through a tunnel, across multiple roads, I am very grateful that the baggage carts are free. 10.22 p.m. and we are waiting for a bus to take us to the other airport. 150 or so people are trying to get onto a bus that holds 50, so they say that it's a priority for families with children. The family takes that opportunity to get on the bus, but before they go, the mother looks back and goes, I have now been adopted. My new family sits in four out of five of the back seats and I sit in the row in front of them. 10.35, we're all tired and cranky and the woman in front of us has a bag on her lap and one in the seat next to her. She's told by an airline representative that she needs to put that bag under the bus with the rest of them. She says that she refuses to put it under the bus because if they lose it, I lose a lot of important stuff. She eventually puts it between her knees and on the seat. She's still taking up quite a bit of space, but at least she's not holding up the bus. People wanna get on the bus and they are trying to fill every seat, so I move back to join my family. It's 11.23 and we arrive at the new airport and Rodrigo, the youngest of my new family, needs to pee. So he and his father rush off to find a bathroom while his brother, mother, and I hurry along behind them. 11.35 and we're in the airport and we discover that we are at the wrong terminal. 11.50 and we get to the correct terminal and security and ticketing are closed. Rodrigo has many questions about everything. He asks multiple times while I'm with them and I don't really have a good answer. His mom says that we've been helping each other out. We've been watching each other's bags and I was watching Rodrigo at one point, so... Kinda true. Ticketing is open, so I go to get my ticket and have a lot of trouble because I can't find my standby boarding pass. They keep talking quietly to each other in French and I don't know what they're saying, and I have no idea if I'm getting a seat. They ask for my reservation number three times. They check my bag again and finally I get a ticket. 2D. Is that first class? A few minutes later and I find my original boarding pass. It is in my bra. Rodrigo asks where it was and why it was there. Uncomfortable for everyone. I'm told I can go to the convenience store and get some free food items. Then 30 minutes later, security won't let me bring my juice through that I just bought from their convenience store in an empty airport. It is 12.40 a.m. and we are all at our gate and boarding starts at 2. Hopefully. It is 1.47 a.m. and Rodrigo is not asleep and has many questions. He just asked whether it's the afternoon right now. It's 1.53 and I thought we were boarding the plane, but it was another bus. At least this one brings us directly to the plane. My family got me into priority boarding just by being like, come with us. It is 2.12 and I am on my flight. 2D is not first class. This appears to be the Spirit Airlines of France. My sandwich from the convenience store has the best bread I've ever eaten in my entire life. And at 4.19 a.m. I arrive in Florence. The older bro of the family got me a baggage cart. Very considerate. At 4.27 a.m. I say goodbye to my new family forever. And that's the story of how I was adopted by a family in Paris. Traveling with Kim is always an adventure. What is my life? If you like weird stories like this, I have many. Please subscribe, and I hear you need to click some bell thing to get notifications these days, so like, do that, I guess. My link to my Patreon and all my social media accounts are in the description. And as always, feel free to leave comments. You'd think that after making these for like eight years, I would know how to end them.
Bye.